This is the installation video for the Autopilot Edition of the MagnaPlate. A couple things. First, because the Autopilot Edition covers all Model S's produced 2012 through the Autopilot Edition, and it covers driving and parking, we're retiring the previous parking and driving versions of the MagnaPlate. Those were two separate things. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So what you see here in front of us are the tools that are going to be required for installation. And really there's a left side and a right side. So this side is for uh, plate mounting and in actuality the drill and the bits and the screwdriver here are if we want to use Tesla's bracket and Tesla's plate frame uh, and that's primarily for driving. And what you see on the right side is what's what's required for, uh, for installation on the car. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Get the non-essential parts out of our way and, uh, and open up the kit. Flashlight here. Uh, and the second set of hands is sometimes helpful, but not, uh, not necessarily required. And for our purposes, given how we've got things set up to show you how it, how it works or how it gets installed, uh, we're not going to need the flashlight. So kit, again, comes in a U.S. priority mailbox. Um, fairly secure. I just grabbed one of the kits that's out and available. So uh, in, uh, in opening the kit, you've got an unmarked bag of plastic suction cups. Uh, unmarked, nothing in it. All the suction cups are virgin, straight out of the bag from the manufacturer. And then as you pull the, uh, the plate frame and kit out, you can see that there's uh, obviously rubber plate frame, vacuum sealed kit uh, with all the parts. We'll open that up in a second. And then the instruction manual. So instructions are fairly extensive. Uh, this video covers everything. Don't want the instructions to be too daunting um, and intimidating, but they're fairly thorough. And again, I think what you'll uh, what you'll find out here in the next 5, 10, 15 minutes is that it's a fairly straightforward process. So again, bag of sealed parts, rubber license plate frame, and uh, and suction cups. Right. So we're not going to need the suction cups now. They go with the license plate frame. We're going to mount that in a couple minutes. Uh, this obviously is the most important part, the bag of sealed parts. Uh, using a pair of scissors, obviously just kind of cut that guy open, dump everything out, check to make sure everything's in there. Bags one through five are in the, are in the kit, in the kit here. And then the measuring, measuring device and uh, a little chopstick to help do a, to help do some alignment. So uh, bag one right here, these are the hitches that get installed on the car. Bag two, this guy here, some thread locker, helps keep things from moving around when you're out driving around. Uh, bag three, this is the their caps, and we'll cover that when we finish the installation on the car side. That's it for the car side of the installation. So if we lay the bags out, you basically have you know, one, two, and three. This is for the car side from a hardware perspective. And then four and five go on the license plate. And uh, again, depending on how it's used, if you're going to be driving, we also use the suction cups um, and maybe drill some holes in Tesla's bracket and Tesla's plate frame. So with that, we're going to move four and five out of the way. And, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and get started here. Before you start opening the bags and, and going crazy, uh, obviously, you know, read the instructions first, watch the video, think about it, and, uh, and take a good look. So let's take a look at the car and figure out where we want to mount the, the, uh, the hitches on the, on the grill. So what we've done is taken a grill and a uh, nose cone off of a car. We've got it laid out here. And you want to find the center line, and we've already, we've already done that, right, in the spirit of time. But take a little piece of tape, put a center line mark, find your spot there, and then, you know, try fit the hitches, figure out where you want to put them, right? Uh, I know it's actually three banks to the left, and we're going to be positioning right here, and then three banks to the right, so one, two, three, right there, and uh, we'll be good to go. If you were only going to be parking with it, and you wanted a, a supreme stealth look, where you actually don't really see the, the hitch pin sticking out at all. You could mount in the, in the bank above it. It's a little bit harder to get it in and get it turned, but uh, 
you virtually not see anything there. Uh, but that would be parking only. If you're going to be driving with it at all, you're going to want to mount them where, uh, where you've got the instruction manual. So uh, it's 3 and uh, 3 sixteenths from the center line. So quick, quick tape measure, you know, just a quick eyeball, you'll see 3 and 3 sixteenths. Uh, put you like right here for the edge of the hitch and then you know same on the other side again, three and three sixteenths uh, like, uh, Right there so equidistant um, And you really only have to get the first one set because once you've got the first one set the other ones naturally uh, fit So now that we've marked the location on the car and we kind of know where they're gonna go Let's go ahead and get things set up bag three not required uh, for what we're going to do right now because we've got to wait for the thread locker to, to sit settle overnight so we're going to set that aside so really on the car side part of the installation it's just bags one and two and uh everything's you know kind of preset if you will take bag one out bag two thread locker uh comes in a little tube you can get this at an auto parts store if you uh run out lose use too much um, Again, this is the hitch. This is a the important part of the whole thing. Basically, this gets screwed onto the car. You're going to insert this into the into the grill. You're going to turn it until it's flush or vertical, and then pull it back. And as you pull it back, there's rubber here that uh, allows it to keep from turning. There's also this little guy that we'll use to to stop it from turning as you pull and turn this. And what you'll notice is as you as you turn this, it's going to push the uh, stainless steel powder coated washer against the rubber washer. This is going to be a friction fit against the honeycomb grill, and you can't turn the screw too much. It actually bottoms out on the standoff, so uh, you can't overturn it. What you can do is once it's tight, you can turn it too much, and the whole thing will turn, and then it'll pop out. So we don't want to do that, but. Um, you know, take the take the the standoff and the installation screw. Take these guys off. You're left with uh, you're left with this. Same on uh, on this one, right? So we turn this off, and now you've got basically the hitches. As I said, the hitch is stainless steel. It's been powder coated. It's been sandblasted, powder coated, and then covered with a rubber coating on the, on the top side so that. As it fits from a friction perspective against the uh, the back side of the grill, it doesn't uh, rotate at least while we do the install. And then a, a rubber washer there to protect the grill from uh, being smashed and scraped. And then another uh, this is actually a stainless steel powder coated washer to uh, to hold everything nice and tight. And we'll show you how that gets kind of squished into place. So anyway, you've got that. Uh, this is thread locker. It helps keep the threads from, uh, it's like a glue, but it's not permanent. Um, it's permanent in the sense that you won't be able to take it off with your fingers, right? You'll need a screwdriver to, to turn things out. But uh, once this sets, uh, it's not gonna move or, or loosen up while you're driving around. So we wanna shake this up a bit, not a lot, not, uh, not all that critical, and then uh, you know, I like to use the scissors to cut this guy open. Always good to have a little rag around. This is a this is a liquid, right? As you squeeze and push, so try not to uh, squeeze it while you're cutting it open. And uh, we don't need a lot of this, right? And you're going to use this for the license plate mounting as well. So don't uh, don't throw it away. It's uh, it's in a little tube with a little cap. So all good on that front. So, you know, gently cut the, cut the tip off after you've shaken it up a little bit. Careful, try not to get, like I said, a big mess everywhere. You'll notice that uh, we did have a little bit squirt out there, but all is okay. If you get it on your fingers, you want to make sure you wipe it off, wash your fingers off, read the instructions, all those types of things. And then you don't need to put a lot, as I said, on, just a, just a little bit. And you'll see from a from a flow perspective, you know it won't go unless uh, unless you you push out a drop or two. So you know, go ahead, do a little practice deal. It's uh, again not a lot right here on the 
tips of the threads. That's enough. That's enough for this guy. And you know, you don't have to work quickly. You've got plenty of time here. And then just barely turn that guy on, just barely. You don't want to turn him on too much. Uh, that'll be obvious in a second. Do the same thing for the other one. Put just a bit on the tip here, on the threads, that is. And you see it kind of works its way around. You know, again, do it over a rag. Try to keep your uh, your work area clean. Just barely turn it on. And uh, that's it for, for this part. We're ready to actually go ahead and, and mount it on the car. And before I forget, go ahead and, uh, and take your little thing of uh, thread locker and drop it back in bag two. You're gonna need that, like I mentioned earlier, for the, for the license plate install, so. So again, apply the thread locker and uh, it goes in and you turn it and then pull back to where it is. So we said the third bent to the left, one, two, three. Again, time is not, time is not of the essence here. Uh, push it in and then, you know, give it a little bit of a turn. And you can see that it's, I think you can maybe see the, the hitch fin here in the back. It's not quite vertical, but, uh, you know, give it a little coaxing, if you will, with uh, the alignment tool, and uh, you can get it vertical. You don't want to, again, you don't want this tight at all to begin with, or you won't be able to push it in. It's all been set, and there was a lot of thought in the lengths and the measures on everything. So it, it fits almost perfect, not too much, not too little. So you sit back as far as you can, and it uh, is not very obtrusive at all when the plate's not mounted. So once you get that guy kind of set, go ahead and uh, pull it back towards you. And as you start to turn this, just use your fingers. You'll feel it uh, tighten up a little bit. Once it gets, uh, you know, just a little tight, go ahead and, and reposition the, the fin if you can so that it's, it's kind of vertical. And, uh, you know, it only takes a second or two. And now, this is the important uh, measure, if you will. Uh, you want this to be 3 16ths off the center to the edge of the actual pin itself. So, make sure that guy's center, turn it down, get it lined up, and uh, at that point you're pretty much good to go. It doesn't have to be perfectly vertical, but uh, again, the more vertical the better. And then slowly turn. Again, with the, uh, the thread locker, it's gonna turn very easy. And what you're doing now is you're compressing that rubber washer on, and you're gonna get to a point where it's not turning. I can turn it now, but in turning it, it's gonna turn everything. So that's the, that's the first hitch. It's installed. You're done with that guy. You, know, you need to wait overnight. So let's do the second one. The second one, you actually don't really need to measure. What we can do is we can use the, the little measuring device. This guy slides right in here like this. Um, you know, at this point you can peel this off unless you want to use it for other measures. Um, we'll use this guy. The thing, again, it's kind of up to you here. Uh, recommendation is to remove the install screw, but still leave the, still leave the standoff on the, uh, on the hitch. Again, just barely. You just barely want it so that you can stick it in turn it and be good. We said it was three off of the center. This is the center, one, two, three. He's gonna go in here. You put him in. It's a tight fit by design. Turn it until it's vertical. Again, if you've got the, uh, if you've just barely put it in, uh, screwed it on, you're in good shape. And then turn it a little bit. Now's a good time to use the, alignment tool to get yourself set up. We're a little too close. We'll uh, slide this guy over a little bit. Again, alignment tool. Um, you don't have to worry about parallel or whatever. It's going to take care of itself. You want to you keep that, uh, that hitch fin vertical. Kind of hard for you to see, I think. I can put the camera at an angle, but you, know, you can't see it uh, perfectly. But you want to pull it towards you if you can um, until it starts to get a little tight. Take this guy out. You now know where you're at. 
and uh, well, that's not perfectly vertical. I would say that uh, that's that's uh, that's going to be just fine. Perfectionists may take it another step, but all good. We're good from an alignment perspective there. Go ahead and put the install screw back in, and. Uh, Set screwdriver, turn, 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 and you know you can, as you turn it here, you'll see the you'll see the hitch fin go vertical. Like that's it. It's as tight as it needs to be. This guy still as tight as it needs to be. That's it. You're done. That's the that's the car side of the install. Uh, pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Uh, <laughs> it's simple and straightforward. I've got this mounted probably four and a half or five feet off the ground for ease of shooting the video. It doesn't have to come off the car, but you're gonna be 13 or 14 inches off the ground, bent over on your knees with nothing to support yourself except your, your, your core stomach muscles. Uh, it's not gonna be as easy as this looks unless you're fairly athletic and in really good shape. This needs to sit overnight. Uh, in the instructions, it'll tell you how long, but I think it's, uh, You've got, uh, like, it'll, it'll handle strength in 30 or 60 minutes, but it really needs a 24-hour cure in order to be locked tight. So overnight should be good. Um, you know, if you do this afternoon or evening, you know, the next morning, you should be good to, uh, to pull the pins out. You can drive with the, with the install screws in, no problem. But uh, you, can't back the, you can't back the screws out until the thread locker is set. And, uh, and you'll see that when we go to take that out. This is license plate prep. And before we you know, prep any of the plates, you really kind of need to make the decision on your own how you want to use, uh, use the magnet plate. So parking only, um, again, like if you like the Tesla bracket and the Tesla frame, uh, no problem. It's just gonna require some drilling and some work to get it all assembled and put together. It looks very nice. Um, the more flexible, literally flexible in terms of, you know, bending, that type of thing, uh, easily to fit in the trunk, that type of deal, um, is the rubber frame that it comes with, right? So let's, let's go with the rubber frame first, and then we can deal with the Tesla bracket in the uh, Tesla frame in a, in a couple minutes. So from a rubber frame perspective, all that you need to do is, uh, again, we've got bags four, five, and the and this and a little bit of thread locker. We'll set those aside for the second. You can use the uh, use the measuring device that uh, that it came with. But we've got to cut out the bottom holes, and you don't want to cut out too much more than we need. So the easiest way is to just you know nice sharp blade go all the way through, not on the not on the plate, but on the rubber frame, just to kind of get that punch through to the back, and then we'll flip it over and cut it out. And then, you know, same thing for, uh, for the other hole. Careful, don't touch yourself. Go for without saying. Be careful you don't slice your plate either. Again, you just kind of need to get through so that you can see it on the back side and, uh, and then take it out, right? So, you know, I don't know, you can kind of see there and there. Those are the two spots, easy to see. Uh, for me right now and uh, you know just kind of go cut through you can pick that little flap up a little bit pull it back and uh, you know you can slice it off that way do the same thing on the other side again get a feel for where it's at and uh, you know punch through be careful with the blade. Obviously, you don't want to you don't want to cut yourself, um, which is easy to do when you're going quickly. You don't want to you don't want to cut too much off, right? We just want enough. It'll be obvious here in a second why. Um, but there you go. And the reason you want a little more than just a bit is you want some flexibility to move them around. Um, 
that's probably good enough. If you've got trouble getting things aligned, you may want to cut a little bit more out, but that's probably a pretty good sized hole uh, in terms of what we want to do. So we're set now. So take, uh, we're going to go with uh, bag four, the receivers, if you will. They go on the bottom, obviously. Remove the uh, screw from that. Take out the, uh, take out the, the two rubber washers. And again, another stainless steel washer there. You've got a bonded stainless steel washer to uh, rubber backside. Same for the other side. Take the screw, slide it through the, uh, slide it through the hole. Stainless washer, rubber washer, and then uh, you know just thread this guy on. You want to get him close, but not all the way on. Again, just a bit so that it, it moves around freely, nice and easy. That's for alignment purposes. The reason there's a rubber washer here is it, it provides some flexibility when we go to put this on the, on the car. You're going to need to, you're going to need to, it's hard for me to, I guess, sure demonstrate this here, but we'll see when we do close-ups on the car. You know, you're going to want to push these in just a little bit because the car is curved. Um, so that's the bottom part. Uh, if you were doing parking only, you wouldn't need the uh, suction cups for the top. If you're going to be driving with it at all, obviously you're going to want the suction cups on the top. So let's go ahead and do the suction cups on the top. So bag five is related to suction cups and uh, a number of different parts in here. And the parts in here uh, work for both the uh, rubber plate and if you were to use Tesla's plate frame, right, for this particular application. We're going to want the stainless steel bonded washers, these two guys. Uh, we're going to need, again, another two rubber washers. And then uh, we're going to want the longer of the two screws. So there are four screws in the bag. Uh, the shorter ones have kind of a, a gold bottom. We want the longer ones. They're 5 8 for those that are interested. And just push them through the, the stainless steel bonded washer. And uh, if you want to, you can give it a little turn with a screwdriver to tighten it up. It'll tighten up when you when you screw it anyway. But uh, so we're good there. Same on the other one. Push that guy through. Give him a little, give him a little turn, tighten him up, just for cleanliness, I guess, personal preference. And then open the, uh, the suction cups. And again, you'll notice that there are three collections. The suction cups are, are we package them face to face together to keep them clean until uh, until it's time to do the install. This is the guy with the side holes. You can see the side holes there. That's for the Tesla bracket and frame. Uh, and we've included four of them. You wouldn't use four; you'd only use three. But in order to keep things clean, and so you've got a spare, we've included four. Again, that's a side hole guy. For the rubber bracket that we ship, you've got uh, their top holes, right? And the way you separate the suction cups, obviously you could pull them apart, but the, the better way for your suction cups is they've got these little tabs. You can just pull a little tab back and, uh, and it'll nice and easily separate. Again, the, <laughs> the goal um, is to keep your suction cups clean and to keep your nose cone clean for best adhesion once they're on, they're on, uh, they're on fairly good. Um, so obviously driving your car and getting it dirty is not a problem, but when you put the suction cups on the first time, you want them to be, you want them to be clean. Or if you're doing the parking version or you drive a little bit with it, every time you put them on and off, you want to make sure they're kind of clean. So, uh, again, bonded screw goes through the front of the plate. Like, so there's a hole in the plate should be good enough for you. And you don't have to worry about alignment because we're not using, uh, magnets or receivers on the, on the top there so they just get kind of poked through like that and then uh, on goes a rubber washer like yay and then we put the suction cup on now this uh, you may want to use a drill for don't have to the hole on the suction cup is kind of small it requires a bit of force this is uh, not that it's an exercise, but this might take you a couple minutes. You've got to push and twist at the same time. Um, it's just uh, 
once you get it set, it goes in fairly easy. But uh, again, you're gonna wanna work it in there. And once it goes, you'll be able to you'll be able to kind of see when you get to the bottom of the screw hole. You don't want to screw it obviously all the way through. Um, you know, I'll try and give you a little visual there. I don't know how easy it is to see that, but if you look at the if you look at the suction cup, hopefully you can kind of see where the uh, the hole stops. There's probably an eighth inch of material between the bottom of the hole and the end of the cup or the, the top of the cup on this side. Um, and, you know, you want the tab up. And again, the positioning is good. If you kind of see it like this, you know, you'll be able to easily put your finger back and pop it right off. So we'll do the other one, same way. Again, not overly difficult, just be patient. And uh, it does take a little bit of pushing strength with the screwdriver. Uh, power drill's a lot easier, but uh, you know, you don't want to over tighten them too much and go through it. So I just put my finger in the center of the cup, push back against the plate, screw until you kind of get it started. Once you get it moving, it should go. I haven't had any problems, haven't had any complaints with these guys yet. So uh, confident that this is going to work quite well. And again, you can start to you can see it start to kind of bottom out, and uh, as it as it bottoms out, it should all be snug. The uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we spent a lot of time measuring distances, ensuring distances. You can over tighten these, but like once everything is snug, that's why you've got the spacer for the uh, for the rubber washers in the back. Like it's going to be snug. You don't want to over tighten it and pull the you know pull the cup off. You can see that it's bulged a little bit. That's uh, that's good. We're nice and tight. This is ready to go on the car for final alignment. So that's it for the for the rubber included plate frame. Um, so let's uh, we'll go ahead and tackle the uh, tackle the Tesla bracket now, so you can get a feel for what uh, for what that that looks like in terms of work. So this is what the uh, Tesla bracket looks like that came with your car. Should be in the trunk somewhere. In order to use this with the magna plate, you need to drill uh, a couple holes. And the first ones are these two guys down here. The holes already exist. You just need to drill a 3 8 inch hole like right through the center of that. And then on the back, score this with, uh, with a knife like this. Once you drill that out, then you'll score this a little bit. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly what the measurement is. It's in the instructions, somewhere around an eighth to a quarter on each side, enough that you'll be able to get uh, a washer there. You know, same for same for both sides, and then uh, and then that's for the receivers. So then, depending on how secure you want it on your car, again, if you were to use this for parking only, um, you need to drill those two out and you're good. If you want to use it for parking and you feel like you might drive with it, I would recommend drilling the next hole, which is up here in the center, and uh, that's a half inch hole, and then mount a suction cup, and I'll show you that in a second. And if you're basically going to drive with it all the time, uh, I would drill all three of these out a half inch, and then put suction cups in there, and, and I'll show you how those guys get mounted uh, in a second. Up here, I think these are, uh, these are, I can't remember, 3 16 um, And I think the plate comes 3 16 We say you need to drill the top ones out to 3 16 I think maybe there was a bracket or two in, uh, in some of the testing that we did where we had to drill those out. But just make sure that those are 3 16 It'll be obvious if they're not. You need it to be 3 16 in order for the screw to go through the hole. And that's all you need to do. Because all this is doing is going to hold, uh, hold the plate to the frame to the bracket and you're good. The up, up here has nothing to do with the car. The suction cups actually 
are what uh, what tie this to the nose cone. So in the spirit of time, I'm not gonna drill this one out. So here you can see we've got a, a Tesla supply bracket that we've already drilled out. 3 8 inch hole, uh, holes on the bottom. And then, as I mentioned before, trim the trim the rib away so you can put the stainless steel washer there and stainless steel washer there. And then uh, a couple rubber washers. Up here on the top, we've drilled this out. It's a half inch drill out. We've drilled all three of them out. And then these are 3 16 and uh, again, I think we drilled these out, but I think uh, maybe the brackets are not coming that way. So uh, I'll go ahead and do one of these. We've already installed two here, but I took one out. Um, we'll show you how that goes. How that goes in. Uh, again, suction cup. You know, it gets pushed through the hole. It doesn't really matter from an alignment perspective. Um, I kind of keep it a bit horizontal. And then you've got a cotter pin. And this is the, it's not tricky, but it's a little tricky. Again, because this is inset and recessed, as this guy pushes through, it catches on this lip. So you're going to want to use like a, a flathead screwdriver or something. You know, take your time. Don't be aggressive. Just kind of work it in until the head drops into the back. And now you want to spread the cotter pin. And, uh, you know, I probably use two hands to do that, but tough to do uh, while I'm holding it. Here, we'll do it this way. Set that guy down, and uh, I think you can still see it. Careful, these guys are a little sharp. Um, and you want to keep it flat so that the head is flat. And, uh, you know, push one back a bit, like yay. Bring this one around this way, start to spread them, and then, uh, you know, the pin itself will fall into the slot on the back, so it's now basically completely recessed, and, uh, you know, it'll move around a bit, that's okay. Uh, we want it to be able to move so that there's a little bit of play on these guys, so that uh, as the car flexes, and uh, so forth, they can they can move a bit. We could have slid a, a pin that made this super tight there, but uh, we think that that would maybe pop off a little bit. So you'll be okay. This is not a problem. This is exactly how it's supposed to look. And uh, you know, again, don't be super aggressive. You'll be okay. That's uh, that's it on this part. So let's take a look at the the frame uh, itself. So that's the bracket. Again, Tesla. I think you probably have a frame like this. It doesn't have holes in the bottom. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, you know, put your license plate in the frame, and then you need to drill a 3 8 inch hole out here. So just mark it, take your plate out, and uh, I'd recommend drilling from the front. Um, you know, maybe punch a pilot hole through and then come back, or you know, put this on a piece of wood and then drill down and out and into the into it uh, and you'll be okay. But uh, you want those holes to line up as much as you can with those holes. As you can see, you know, this bracket is centered like so. And uh, don't worry about the size of the hole because the size of the hole is going to be covered by um, by the stainless steel washer that uh, that we showed on the, on the rubber plate frame as well. So let's go ahead and get this guy uh, screwed up and then uh, we'll go ahead and do final alignment on the car. The receivers come preloaded with two rubber washers and a stainless washer and then the screw and the, and the bonded stainless steel washer. And again, we've drilled out the two holes. The rib's been removed and you can kind of see here on the edge. We've trimmed it all the way to the, to the side here so that it'll fit. And it's uh, fairly straightforward. Put the, uh, put the bonded screw through like that. Stainless steel washer. And again, it's shipped with two, and if you were going to use all three suction cups, but primarily uh, drive lightly with it, taking it on and off quite a bit, and you don't want these suction cups to be uh, as bonded, it, as strong to the nose cone, you might want to try two, right? And that'll allow the front one to stay good, the side ones uh, not so tight from a suction cup perspective. It'll make it easier to take it on and off in that sense. Um, you know, I recommend one if you're going to do all three of these guys. 
and one's a good starting point. And when we talk about uh, final alignment, you'll see you may take, you may add one, you may take both of them out. It may be different on each side. It's uh, it's going to depend on how uh, how things get set up. But we'll start with one. And uh, again, no thread locker yet for these guys. One on that side. Add this one to uh, to this side. Stainless washer. We'll drop a rubber one on there and uh, screw that guy on. And again, you want these fairly fairly loose. Lots of good play. Yes, we're happy there. And uh, that would be a good time to do the top. Again, the uh, the orange tipped one goes for the Tesla bracket. And now would be a good time. And there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of space there to actually get it accomplished. But if you push with your finger and push that through, you can put a little drop of thread locker on there. Again, it doesn't take much. And then uh, get the get the screw started. And uh, you know, just get him on there. I do the other one as well. I'm not actually putting the thread locker on, uh, but um, this should be the only time that you're going to be playing with these top screws, I think. Uh, thread locker, get this screw started a bit, and uh, I imagine the thread locker is going to maybe leak out a tad. So when you turn it around and you go to screw these tight, you may want to just put a little towel back there to keep it off your fingers. And, uh, you know, again, screw this down until the, uh, until the screw is flush on the back. Uh, again, because of the, the rubber washer here on the front, there'll be a lot of compression and uh, you could over tighten it, but there's no need to. Just get so that it's nice and flush on the back and you're, uh, you're good to go. So again, these guys flush, thread lock them. These guys super loose so that when we uh, put on the car for final alignment, it's easy to get things adjusted. So we said in the beginning of the video that uh, you're going to use bag three once the once the hitches and the standoffs have been set. So it's been overnight. Let's go ahead and take the install screws out. There's going to be a quick break as you break them free and then they'll spin right out. And you just use your fingers. If you wanted to, uh, you know, if you were getting rid of the car and you wanted to remove this so that no one knew that it was there, you'd actually just put the install screw back in, so keep them. And, uh, and then you just keep turning it until the fin goes horizontal and then just slide it right out. Um, but again, take the, uh, take the install screws out, grab, uh, grab bag number three. They're effectively a couple different pieces in bag three. You've got two rubber protectors. I'll show you those in a second. You've got two additional rubber washers. So there are two rubber washers here. And then you've got the, uh, the caps themselves. This is the only steel part of uh, the whole assembly, and it's steel for its magnetic properties. Just put that guy in there. Turn it. This is what attracts the magnets from the receivers that go on the license plate. Turn that again, finger tight. Doesn't have, you don't have to doesn't have to be super tight. Uh, but you obviously want it as snug as you can get it. You won't be able to turn it too far by hand. So once those guys are on, take a rubber washer. The rubber washer goes over. The purpose of the rubber washer is to protect, even though that's a stainless steel washer that's been powder coated black with uh, industrial automotive strength powder coating, this guy, this little rubber washer, protects it from all sorts of road rash, helps keep it good and fresh. So, uh, try to make everything look as good as it can for as long as it can. Uh, along the lines of looking as good and uh, as long as it can, uh, the caps, now go over this and it's for when the plate's not mounted so for those that are doing uh, parking only right if you're not uh, if the plate's not mounted you want these guys to be covered and you know they come these are an inch long uh, you cut them to cut them to length however you want 
uh, measure, figure it out. I'll say right there, you just a pair of scissors, cut them both down. And uh, again, these are mandatory in any harsh environment where you're not going to be, uh, you're not going to have a plate mounted. You just push them on and, uh, and that's what it looks like. So you're all, you're all good. Once you get them on, you may want to squeeze them and turn clockwise to tighten the cap one last time. When you take these off, you give it a little pinch on the end and, uh, and pull it back. And, uh, you know, they don't come off super easy, but take them off easy enough. And uh, storage, we've got a, a, a screw that we're working on that doesn't, uh, we didn't get them in this production run for the right length, but uh, it's all good. So those guys come right off. We'll give you a quick feel for the magnetic attraction and then take a shot from the side and show you the squish. I want to try and give you a little bit of a, a shot or a view of how the sandwich works. I don't know if it's uh, very visible, but you might be able to see a little bit there where the where the uh, rubber washer has been compressed uh, against the stainless steel washer and then you've got the outer rubber washer that's the kind of protective guy. So anyway. So time for our final alignment. We're gonna start with the rubber frame first. Uh, again, put uh, take these guys off. Put a little thread lock around the threads just like when we did the hitches. Put it back on. You got plenty of time. Uh, again, you want it to be nice and loose as they go and uh, I'll just line it up with the uh, hitches. They'll snap right on. Go ahead and find a good spot for the suction cups. Give those guys a little push and uh, you know check to make sure that it's square. You like that? The fit? And uh, it's time to tighten the bottom. Let's tighten these screws. Put your fingers behind. Hold the uh, Hold the receivers in place. You don't have to get them super tight. Again, you're not gonna. You're you don't want to over tighten them. You want to get it so that uh, it's nice and snug. There's a lot of compression with the uh, the rubber underneath this particular washer, the rubber on the back side, and the rubber in the plate frame. So there's no need to get it super tight. There's just you just want to get it firm, right? And once you're firm, you're good. You may want to look at it from the side. See how it lines up, but uh, that's uh, that looks pretty good to me. The thread locker will set, and this will be locked into place with the uh, the squish, if you will. So again, this is uh, this is kind of the call it the parking version, or uh, you know, light driving. And again, we say light driving. You don't want to just pull it off. It's rough on the nose cone a bit but uh, rough on the suction cups as well. And because you've got easy access to the tabs up here on the top, I think you can see that. Uh, you can't see the tabs, but you'll be able to see it once, you, uh, once you're in front of it. You just, you just pop these guys off, and then this slides right off. Slide it back on. I was talking about using your fingers to flex it a little bit. Like, you can see the flex here, right? They flex a little bit. That's good, you want that. You just use your fingers, find the find the uh, pins with your fingers and uh, slide it on, give it a little push and uh, and you're good to go. And this, you know, this I'm not going to pull it off the wall, but you know, this uh, it requires a bit of force to pop the suction cups if you were just going to pull it off. Um, again, in this because they're screwed on, don't just pull it off, use the tabs to, to do the easy release. but. Uh, you know, that's it. That's all it takes. And uh, you're good with the rubber frame. Remove. Release those. Slide it off. You're good to go. Okay, time for final alignment of the Tesla bracket and frame. What we've got here, uh, obviously the receiver's nice and well of play there. A couple things. One, you want to do this when this is uh, 40 degrees or warmer. You want the suction cups to be nice and pliable. Once it gets cold out, it's okay. They'll still remain uh, stuck and the suction will still be there. But the first time you do it, you want to make sure that it's 40 degrees or warmer. Uh, obviously, make sure the suction cups are clean. Make sure your nose cone's clean. 
And again, in the video, we ship the receivers and the attachment kit with a stainless steel washer and two rubber washers. And you'll notice here, uh, we've got one rubber washer on the right. We've got no rubber washers here on the left, right? This is uh, just by himself in the, in the stainless washer. It's a, I don't wanna say it's trial and error, but for the most part, it is trial and error. It's gonna depend on how, you know, this was manufactured, like where's the flex in this? Your nose cone, your grill, where are the, where are the hitches in terms of, you know, alignment, that, uh, that aspect. And uh, again, a little bit of experimentation. So before, um, before doing the thread locker aspect on these guys, go ahead, go through the whole final alignment once. And then once you know whether you want one or two rubber washers on each side, once you've got that a little bit dialed in, then go ahead, take them off, put the thread locker back on, and then you're good to go. I know that this for this nose cone and this grill and how it's set up, we're gonna want nothing on the left side and one on the right hand side. We'll go ahead and slide that on and I'll, I'll give you an idea of what we're talking about. It'll snap right into place, slide them over the hitches. Here the magnets lock in. Tighten the plate, lots of plate now obviously. Find a nice level spot, figure out where you like it. Give the center suction cup a push. So now you're locked in from a center suction cup perspective. And then you look on the sides and uh, I'll try and give you a quick view of the sides, but uh, it's going to be a, a bit difficult to see, I think. Um, but you can see there, without any pushing, you can see the gap between the suction cup and the nose cone. Like there we're touching, there we're not. So it's pretty close. This is pretty good. And uh, other side, this is even more difficult to see. But uh, the, you can see the, if you can see, try and get it so you can see it a little bit. Uh, the tolerance for the suction cup there against the nose cone, that tolerance is pretty tight. And we haven't tightened anything up yet, right? So that's how you want it before you get into uh, tightening things down. And then, yeah, again, once you're kind of comfortable on, you've got it close enough, then it's just a matter of tightening the, the screws on the bottom until things are nice and snug. You don't want them so snug that you pull the plate under the nose cone, which creates a lot of stress on the top and or might pull the receivers back a little bit and you might break the bond. So again, a little bit of trial and error before you do the final fit. And uh, I think you'll, you'll kind of understand what we're talking about when, uh, when you do it. You want them snug. It doesn't have to be super tight. You don't want to bottom them out necessarily. And uh, if you keep an eye on the side, what you'll see as you're turning is uh, you'll see the suction cup come in closer and closer. I'd say once it's touching the nose cone, you're probably in a good spot uh, on both sides. And uh, once you've got that done, you just give each side a little push and check to make sure you're locked in. And uh, another little look and uh, I think you can kind of I think you can kind of see that. This is a uh, suction cup is locked in. The top is obviously locked in. And uh, this guy over here, again, very difficult to see given how we've got the stuff positioned. But this one's, this one's locked in as well. You can see a little bit of play on the suction cup itself, but, uh, but that's locked in. So now at this point, you are, uh, you're mounted, good to go. Now it's just a matter of going out, driving with it, or taking it off. Taking it off, hand goes like this, kind of upside down. Uh, you want to try and get your fingers and your thumb between the plate and the nose cone, the bracket and the nose cone, on both sides, and then kind of break the top and slide straight off towards you. You'll hear the suction cups go, receivers slide right off, and, uh, and that's the deal. And slide it back on, you'll hear the magnetic receivers catch, give a little push, fur, you know, punch it, Right, a little push over here, right here on the plate, another one right here on the plate, and uh, you're ready to drive. And that's final alignment on the Tesla bracket.